All right, A-plus students, welcome to your Chapter 5 presentation over the American Revolution. Uh, we've been building up to this huge event uh, up to this point. Um, understand that by 1776, the outset of the American Revolution, you basically had three groups of colonists. About 40% of those were patriots who are looking for independence. About 20% of, of the people are actually still loyal to Great Britain and certainly don't want to fight them. And about 40% of people are neutral. They don't really know whose side to go on. They would like independence, but maybe they're afraid of losing uh, home, property, and lives to Britain. Okay, come on. There we go. All right. Now, we know how we got to this point. We talked about uh, the Stamp Act, Sugar Act, Quartering Act, Townsend Acts, all that good stuff, uh, going all the way, tracing it all the way back to the French Indian War and the taxation that came after that. Um, understand that the American Revolution was most in, most definitely inspired by the Enlightenment. Uh, Montesquieu gave us this idea of separation of powers and the checks and balances system that we will incorporate in our early government. Now, Thomas Paine gave us a pamphlet you need to know called Common Sense, where he urged colonial independence from Great Britain. Uh, amongst things. They, and he does this in very simplistic tones. He doesn't write fancy and learned. He writes something that the common farmer can understand, and that helps a lot. And he in it, one of the things he says is, uh, how does it make sense that an island 3,000 mi 3, miles away should run a continent? Um, it just He just doesn't get it. So definitely the Enlightenment and this idea of new government um, by July 1776, colonial attitudes towards Great Britain have changed. You know, they show up with their ships to try to threaten us, and we didn't really take to that too kindly. They're taxing us, breaking up our uh, colonial charters and things of that nature. Um, eventually, we get enough people who are patriots that we uh, draft a second Continental Congress, and their job's going to be to write the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Thomas Jefferson becomes the principal author of that. Uh, some famous things uh, involved in that document, of course, are all men are born with natural rights of life, liberty, and property. And the citizens can break their social contract with their government when their government becomes tyrannical. These are things that will eventually make it into our Constitution. Uh, again, based on the enlightened ideas of John Locke. You can see that there. We talked about him in world history. We won't worry about that. All right. We're not going to examine the Declaration of Independence too closely. They won't ask you that on the test. All right. We have watched the episode. All right. Declaration of Independence, you should know, is a formal separation, formal demand for separation. But Revolutionary War had already started back with Lexington and Concord uh, outside of Boston. Uh, they remembered that they had closed down Boston Harbor. They had basically put Boston Harbor under martial law under the British. And uh, people there were tired of it, and they were beginning to amass secret stores of weapons. That information made it to the British commander of Boston. And so his troops march to uh, Lexington to get these, uh, these hidden stores, but word had raced ahead of them. And so the Patriots had gone there, got their weapons, and disappeared into the woods. Um, along the way, some Minutemen uh, stood up against them, and the British fired, or at least somebody fired. The shot heard around the world. It's unclear. It is, I suppose, possible that one of the Minutemen had fired the first shot. Perhaps they were nervous uh, facing off against so many British regulars. But regardless... Uh, several Minutemen were killed in this little scrum, and um, the the British march on, figure out that the weapons have been moved, and so they turn around to march back to Boston. Well, word got out, and along the way, coming back to Boston, outside of Concord, they're met with m more Minutemen and other revolutionaries who start mowing them down and, and enact significant damages on the British Army in revenge uh, for Lexington Green. Um, the Continental Army is our regular army. We have militia, we have farmers, people who are just joining up uh, here and there when they're not planting crops. But the Continental Army is our first 
professional army. You'll you'll have an enlistment, and you that will be your job. You'll be a soldier. It's placed under the command of George Washington. Um, it's going to face a lot of issues there. Here's a painting of Independence Hall. It's pretty famous. All these important people there. Colonists, again, have to choose sides. Now, advantages. Uh, what are the advantages and weaknesses? Certainly with the United States, it's home turf. You have George Washington, who is such – he's a guy who's able to inspire so much from people. It's not that he's the best at anything. He's certainly not. He just – he's able to get the best out of everyone else and um, very inspirational. We Most of our soldiers weren't trained. We didn't have enough food and ammunition. The, one of the worst things working against us is no central government. You have all these people. Washington needs Congress to give him these items, and Congress can't agree with what he should have and when he should get it, and really gives him almost an impossible task. Whereas Great Britain has the best trained army in the world, a very strong central government. They have money. Um, they also have support of colonists who are loyals, uh, loyalists, and Native Americans want Britain to win because Britain is more sympathetic to Indians than the colonists are. However, they are fighting a war 3,000 miles away from home, so that's certainly a disadvantage. Um, their troops aren't familiar with this kind of terrain. Uh, their military leaders are not especially good. And um, back home, there are even British politicians who are sympathetic towards uh, the American plight. There are those who believe that rather than fight with the colonists, we that Britain should give them their independence and trade with them because there's a lot of money to be made out there. All right, when the war began, British had clear advantages, such as a 400% larger and more experienced army, and some of the things, other things that I said, we won't repeat them. Britain certainly underestimated the colonial commitment to independence, without a doubt. They thought that they could shock and awe the colonists into giving up. That was not the case. George Washington is the symbol of the American cause and becomes the most famous American in the world. Um, he encouraged common citizens and volunteer soldiers to support the war, even when the British seemed destined to win. One of the best things with Washington is he knew that as long as he had an army, the Americans couldn't be defeated. But if he ever allowed his army to be defeated and crushed by the British, then the revolution would be over. So while he suffered defeats, he always managed to sneak his army out. He always managed to uh, get away from the British, and, and that was one of his greatest accomplishments as general. Uh, there you go. You see it. Different strategies. <clears throat> British are trying to divide and conquer the, uh, the colonies. They thought they had more loyalists in the south. Turns out. They got down there, and uh, the South turns against them as well. Um, we talked about that, the American Revolution beginning there. Early on, British victories make it look impossible for the colonies to win. Uh, they capture and burn New York, as you saw in the video. Um, Christmas Eve, 1776, Washington has this famous crossing of the Delaware River. Uh, surprised British troops and took many of them captive and captured their weapons and stores of arms and, and cannons and things like that. It was a big time, big time move by him crossing the Delaware. You see, yeah, I have the painting in my room, put it down here in the left corner. All right, crossed it. Surprise attack on Trenton and Princeton, big time. Whoa, come back. All right, Ben Franklin has a huge role uh, here during the war, not as a fighter, of course, but as a diplomat to France. It's his job to convince the French to help us. French government was willing because they hate the British, but they don't want to back a losing cause. So they, they had to see that the Americans actually have at least a small chance of winning. And they finally get that after the Battle of Saratoga, which is why that battle was so important. Uh, the French will agree to join the American cause, giving us the Franco-American alliance. The French are going to give us money and eventually troop support and certainly naval support that we needed. So Battle of Saratoga, big time turning point. Um, after Saratoga, the French general uh, Marquis de Lafayette helped train American troops, while the French uh, Navy helped neutralize the British advantage on the high seas. 
And when the French troops arrived in the spring of 1778, the tide of the war shifted in favor of the Americans. It's just what we needed. Uh, we talked a little bit about Valley Forge, where Washington's men were at winter camp and they were starving and fighting off smallpox. And of course, George does his inoculation of the people there. It saves the day. We get uh, Baron von Steuben shows up. That's a famous painting as well. From 78 to 81, both sides traded victories, but the war finally comes down to the conclusive battle of Yorktown. This will be the last battle of the Revolutionary War. The British will surrender. It's going to take a couple of years for the peace treaty, Treaty of Paris, to get signed. It'll finally get ratified in 1783. General Cornwallis was the losing British commander who surrendered to George Washington. The day the world turned upside down. Uh, not for us. Treaty of Paris 1783 ends, officially ends the American Revolution. What did it give us? Full independence and, very importantly, all territory east of the Mississippi River between Canada and Florida, because this is held by Spain. Um, remember that here in this area was the Proclamation of 1763 that our colonists had ignored. Now they have rights all the way out to the Mississippi River. So it's a bad day for Native Americans. Uh, supposedly the British were supposed to remove all of their army, uh, and personnel from, uh, forts that they had out here in America. They don't do that. We are going to have to have another war with Britain in 1812. Okay. There's a little bit of a, of a rundown on some of the most important things you need to know from this very specific time period, which is just the Revolutionary War itself. The next thing we'll talk about, of course, is the early colonial government, early American government, the Articles of Confederation, and eventually the Constitution. All right. Thanks for listening. I hope you find this helpful.